In September 1963, a new primetime drama series debuted on NBC. It centered on a young Marine Corps officer freshly graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy on his first assignment at Camp Pendleton in Southern California. The series was called The Lieutenant, starred Gary Lockwood in the lead role as Second Lieutenant Bill Rice, and was created and produced by a 42-year-old writer named Gene Roddenberry. In September of 1964, The Lieutenant was scheduled to air its 21st episode, titled To Set It Right. The episode deals with a conflict between a racist white corporal, played by Dennis Hopper, and a black private, played by Don Marshall. The Pentagon, which had been cooperating with the production of the series, withdrew its support due to what officials there considered the episode's controversial subject matter. As a result, NBC never actually aired the episode, and canceled the series a short time later. The Lieutenant's first season was also its last. Following the conflict with NBC and the Pentagon over to set it right, Roddenberry, like Rod Serling before him, decided that the best way to write political, socially conscious television and actually get it on the air was to address controversial topics indirectly, through metaphor. So, after The Lieutenant was canceled, he began developing another series, Star Trek. After two pilot episodes were produced, Star Trek was picked up for a full season by NBC, and Roddenberry began filling out the cast of recurring characters. For the role of the Starship Enterprise's communications officer, he chose an actor he remembered from The Lieutenant. She had portrayed the fiancé of the private played by Don Marshall. Her name was Nichelle Nichols, and she would become one of the most important actors in the history of television. Lieutenant Uhura, the character Nichols would portray in 69 episodes of Star Trek, the original series, 16 episodes of Star Trek, the animated series, and the first six Star Trek feature films, debuts in The Man Trap, the first Star Trek episode to be broadcast, which it was on the 8th of September, 1966, two years after that episode of The Lieutenant was supposed to have aired. In her first scene, we find Uhura on the bridge having a chat with Spock, who is in command of the Enterprise while Kirk is on an away mission. Uhura is charming, flirtatious, teasing Spock about his stoic and logical nature. And by the way, this is also Spock's first scene, too, so the next time someone complains about the reboot movies making Spock and Uhura a couple, remind them that they're flirting with each other on classic Trek in their very first scene ever. Well, Uhura's flirting, anyway. Spock is... spurred. Better leave that one alone. Even though this is only her first scene, and she still has a lot more to show us, right away we see that there is something special about Uhura and Nichelle Nichols. Whoopi Goldberg has told the story of how excited she was as a child to see a black woman on TV who wasn't playing a maid that sort of representation was rare at the time, and extremely important. It's true that the mere presence of Nichelle Nichols as a member of the cast was inspiring, but it was more than that. Uhura is shown to be a valued member of the Enterprise crew. Throughout the series and into the movies, we see the other characters relying on her skills and deferring to her expertise when appropriate. She's an officer in a hierarchical command structure, so it's not precisely accurate to say she's treated as an equal, but she is treated with respect by all of her shipmates and is never presented as inferior to or less capable than white members of the crew. She's also depicted and acknowledged as a beautiful woman. Her beauty and sexuality aren't presented as exotic or threatening or in a way that's demeaning she was a beautiful woman, allowed to be seen as beautiful. At the time, it was just as groundbreaking for a black woman to be shown this way as it was to show her as being good at her job. She's shown to be good at her job, too, of course. Not only is she the main communications officer, throughout the course of the series, we also occasionally see her subbing for Spock as science officer and at the navigator's position. In the second season episode, Who Mourns for Adonais, we see Uhura underneath the communications console affecting emergency repairs. 
When she cautions Spock that it's delicate work and could take a while longer, Spock replies, I can think of no one better equipped to handle it, Miss Uhura. Nichols also gets the opportunity to show off her splendid singing voice a time or two as well, starting with the second episode to be broadcast, Charlie X, where Uhura performs a song with Spock accompanying her on his Vulcan lute. She improvises lyrics first about Spock, then about teenage demigod Charlie Evans. Charlie's song gets cut short when Charlie uses his powers to temporarily rob Uhura of her voice. That's how we know Charlie's a villain. He stops Nichelle Nichols from singing. Normally what I do for tribute videos like this is choose a particular episode and use that episode as a microcosm through which to examine and celebrate the actor and the character I'm paying tribute to. In this case, that's not so easy. There isn't really an Uhura episode of Star Trek The Original Series. The show didn't really work like that. Pretty much every episode revolves around Captain Kirk, Spock, Dr. McCoy, or some combination thereof, allowing each member of the supporting cast to take center stage for an episode or two every season didn't really become a thing in Star Trek until The Next Generation. So I picked out a few of my favorite scenes and moments from throughout the series and the movies to feature Nichols as Uhura. I already covered her first scene in The Man Trap and her singing in Charlie X. She also sings in The Conscience of the King and briefly in The Changeling, right before Nomad races her brain. I also love this quick bit from The Naked Time, when Sulu, drunk on that Psy 2000 polywater, pulls Uhura to his side and says, I'll protect you, fair maiden, to which Uhura replies with annoyance, sorry, neither. She has another memorable interaction with Sulu in Mirror Mirror, when Captain Kirk tasks Uhura with distracting the evil version of Sulu from the security board so that they can carry out their plan to escape the Mirror Universe and return home. Mirror Sulu has been leering at Uhura the entire episode, so she decides to get his attention by giving him a little bit of what he wants. She appears at his side, scolds him flirtatiously for not pursuing her with more determination, and allows Sulu to enfold her in a lusty embrace. Then, once she glances at the security board and sees the distraction is no longer necessary, she pulls away, smacks the shit out of Sulu, and announces that she's changed her mind. When Sulu takes offense, she pulls a knife on him. That's what you get, skeevy mirror Sulu. That's what you get. Of course, in Plato's stepchildren, we get the historic kiss between Uhura and Kirk, the first interracial kiss in American television. It demands to be included on any list of Nichelle Nichols or Uhura's greatest hits due to its cultural significance, but on its own merit as a scene, it's really nothing to write home about. And there isn't really much for Nichols to do as an actor. They have her do the I'm frightened, Captain, thing, which always gets on my nerves. But at least this time, we also get to see her working through that fear and overcoming it. Granted, she overcomes it by reflecting on how awesome Captain Kirk is, but hey, it's something. The jump from TV to the movies didn't really do anything to increase the number of Uhura's showcase moments, but we still got a few good ones from the classic Trek run of films. In fact, one of the most celebrated of all Uhura scenes comes from Star Trek III, when Uhura has been reassigned following the Enterprise's return to Earth. She's on duty in the transporter room at some decidedly unglamorous Starfleet facility, working alongside a disgruntled junior officer who describes the posting as the worst duty station in town. Suddenly, Kirk, McCoy, and Sulu arrive on their way to stealing the Enterprise to go retrieve Spock's body from the Genesis planet. And the junior officer, who Uhura dubs Mr. Adventure, is like, what's going on? And Uhura's like, what's going on is, I'm going to get my friends where they're going, and while I do that, you're going to sit in the closet. Mr. Adventure says, sit in the closet? Have you lost all your sense of reality? And Uhura's like, thanks for setting up my next line by saying that completely natural sentence that anyone would say in your situation, and whips out a phaser and says, this isn't reality. This is fantasy. 
Now go sit your ass in the closet before I bend you over and use this phaser to play tic-tac-toe on your back. That's not word for word, but it's in the same spirit. Anyway, great scene for Uhura. In Star Trek V, we get the fan dance scene, which, I don't know, I've never really cared for it. Not because it's inherently bad or because Nichelle Nichols is a woman of a certain age by this point, because it's the only really memorable thing Uhura does in the movie, and it feels like something they added into the script just to give her something to do, you know? At least she fares better in that department than her insta-boyfriend Scotty. All he gets to do is knock himself unconscious by walking into a bulkhead, the poor drunken fool. But things look up for Uhura in the final Star Trek film to feature the original crew, Star Trek VI. This movie handles the supporting cast well, generally speaking, giving everyone little moments to shine here and there, and creating a sense of them as a cohesive crew, where everyone has something to contribute that isn't always present in the films, or the show, really. And it has one scene in particular that allows Nichelle Nichols to show off a facet of her talent that I haven't mentioned yet, her comedic instincts. The Enterprise is on its way to rescue Kirk and McCoy from a Klingon prison colony when they are contacted by a Klingon listening post, knowing that to respond with the Universal Translator would blow their cover to the Klingons, the crew scrambles to manually translate the messages of the Klingon radio operator and respond appropriately. It's a funny scene. Kind of cartoonish, everyone hurriedly flipping through dictionaries to find the right words, Uhura stumbling through her delivery and putting together sentences that barely make sense. But what really impresses me is the way Nichelle Nichols plays the ending of the scene. After, somehow, convincing the Klingons to accept their cover story and let them pass, Uhura joins the rest of the crew in a forced parting laugh then immediately drops the smile and snaps the frequency closed with a look of serious irritation. That's important, because this scene really doesn't fit in with the rest of the movie tonally. There are other jokes in the film before and after this scene, but nothing this broad. We've gotten a fairly serious, straightforward Star Trek movie up to this point, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's this scene from a Mel Brooks movie. What Nichelle Nichols does with that irritated snapping of the switch at the end is, first, she gives the scene a funny ending. That instantaneous shift from laughter to mirthlessness is always funny when it's played right, and Nichols plays it perfectly. And second, she provides a smooth transition from this incredibly silly scene into the once again serious, straightforward rest of the movie. The start of the scene doesn't need a smooth transition because the abrupt shift in tone at the beginning is part of what makes it funny, but we don't want the shift from funny back to serious to be jarring, so ending the scene on a serious note, albeit one that is played in a comedic context, is really important. And Nichelle Nichols accomplishes that through her performance. She really does play it just right. It's a little thing but it's something I notice and appreciate every time I watch that scene. There are other memorable moments with Nichelle Nichols as Uhura that I haven't mentioned. Why don't you share one of yours in the comments? But I have to warn you, if you were planning to mention the Star Trek, the animated series episode, the Lorelei signal, think of another one. Because I saved that one for last. Ha <laughs> ha! In your face! Of course, I say that with all the love in the world and with nothing but the deepest respect for the memory of Nichelle Nichols. The Lorelei Signal is the fourth episode of Star Trek the Animated Series and begins with the Enterprise arriving in a mysterious region of space where starships have been disappearing like clockwork once every 27 years. Right on time, the ship receives a signal from a distant star. Kirk, Scotty, and Spock react to the signal, which has a somewhat musical quality. They feel like the signal is calling out to them, summoning them to its source. But Uhura is sitting right there, and she's like, uh, what? They warp to the planet, and once they arrive, the men begin seeing women with white hair, visions which Uhura doesn't see, 
and neither does Nurse Chapel, whom Uhura has called to the bridge to help her keep an eye on the men. Meanwhile, in sickbay, Dr. McCoy isn't hallucinating women, he's hallucinating magnolia blossoms, the weirdo. Kirk, Spock, McCoy, and this red shirt named Carver beam down to the planet and are immediately taken captive by the women from their visions. They're fitted with cute little tiaras, and they seem to be aging rapidly all of a sudden. Meanwhile, back aboard the Enterprise, Uhura and Chapel have found scientific evidence that the signal from the planet only affects men, and that prolonged exposure to it causes weakness and eventually death. So Uhura's like, I want an all-woman security squad on guard outside every transporter room. Nobody goes down to that planet unless I say so. And Chapel's like, what are you doing? And Uhura says, hang on, push that camera in. There we go. I'm taking command of this ship! Technically, Scotty is still in charge of the ship, having been left in command when Kirk beamed down to the planet. Fortunately, Scotty is drunk and semi-consciously warbling his way through some morose old ballad, so when Uhura walks up to him and says she's taking command, Scotty's just like, whatever you like, lassie, if you need me, I'll be... Down on the planet, Kirk, Spock, and McCoy have figured out what's going on too, so Spock sneaks away, finds his communicator, and calls the Enterprise, requesting an all-female rescue team. Uhura's like, can do, and she beams down with a squad of badass lady security guards. And also Nurse Chapel. Thela, the leader of the women on the planet, shows up with her crew and says, you're not wanted here, get lost. And Uhura's like, I've got a better idea, and shoots her. They find Spock and beam him back to sickbay, but he's super old now, and Uhura's like, this is no good. So she beams back down, wakes up Thela, and says two things. Release Captain Kirk and Dr. McCoy, and tell me how to restore them to their natural ages. Or I'll kill you. So, three things, I guess. Thela explains that she and the other women here are descendants of a race that came here long ago. The radiation of the planet naturally drains the energy of humanoids, but the women evolved an ability to survive and to manipulate the minds of men and drain their energy. Now they are basically immortal as long as they lure in a fresh batch of men every 27 years and use them to recharge. Uhura says, hey, fascinating backstory, where are they? They find Kirk, McCoy, and the miraculously still alive Carver treading water in an urn where they ran to hide, which has since filled up with rainwater. Uhura has not beamed back to the ship, but again, still a bunch of old heads. Spock comes up with a possible solution, beam them down to the planet, then beam them back up, and rematerialize them as their younger selves according to their previous transporter patterns, which the computer still has on file. Kirk says, will that actually work? And Spock says, there's a 99% chance it won't. Kirk's like, let's do it. So they do it, and it works. It works so well, they use the same trick to reverse some wacky aging effects on Star Trek The Next Generation. A couple of times. Uhura makes one last trip to the planet to make sure Thela destroys the signal transmitter that's been enticing all these ships to her planet, then tells her that another Starfleet vessel will be by shortly to pick everybody up and move them to a new planet where they can grow old and die like everybody else. For some reason, Thela takes this as good news, so happy ending! The character of Uhura is more central to this episode than she is to any episode of TOS, and she has some memorably badass moments, like her declaration that she's taking command of this ship, which is a long-held favorite of mine, but even this doesn't quite qualify as an Uhura episode. When all is said and done, though, the lack of Uhura-centric episodes is less important than the influence Uhura and Nichelle Nichols did have. And that influence wasn't due to the amount of time she was on screen. It was due to the fact that she was on screen and what she represented while she was there. The truth is, for all the moments throughout classic Trek, the animated series, and the movies where she shines, often Uhura is not used especially well. Like Sulu and Chekhov, Uhura often serves no purpose in the story other than to dispense exposition or provide setups for Kirk, Spock, or McCoy. And, as I mentioned earlier, the writers of Classic Trek 
also had a really bad habit of having Uhura tell Kirk how frightened she was in tense situations. She's not a bad character by any means, but I can see why she would have sometimes been a frustrating character to play, especially for an actor with the irresistible charisma and screen presence of Nichelle Nichols. In fact, after the first season, Nichelle Nichols was going to leave the show. But then she had an encounter with a fan that changed her mind. She Actually, why don't I let her tell it? That very weekend, I went to an NAACP fundraiser, and someone came to me and said, Miss Nichols, there's someone who wants to meet you. He's a great fan of yours. And I turned around into the face of Dr. Martin Luther King. And I was stunned. And he said, yes, I'm, I'm a big fan of yours. And I said, thank you very much. I'm very happy about that. And of course, I'm leaving the show after this first year. And he said, you cannot. And I was taken aback. And uh, I, I, I beg your pardon. He said, don't you know who you are? Don't you know what you have? You have created a character with dignity and beauty and intelligence, he said, your most important input is for everyone who doesn't look like us, who sees us for the first time as we should be seen, as equals. And that Monday when I went back to tell Gene Roddenberry what Dr. King had said, and I said to him, if you still want me to stay, I'll stay. She stayed all right. In the late 1970s, Nichols began working with NASA to recruit new astronauts. Her focus was on attracting women and minorities to join the space program. Sally Ride, the first American woman in space, was one of her recruits. So was Guillaume Bluford, the first black American in space. The program Nichols launched eventually recruited 8,000 people to NASA and helped to redefine the agency for generations to come. Nichols' work with NASA is chronicled in the documentary film Woman in Motion, and if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend that you do. It's currently streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Nichelle Nichols was a multi-talented, magnetic performer. She appears on screen, and you can't take your eyes off of her. Watching Star Trek, even when she isn't given anything particularly important or interesting to do, she inhabits the role of Uhura with a confidence and intelligence that should be the envy of any actor. But I don't say she's one of the most important actors in Star Trek and in the history of television just because she's really good. One of the things that sets Star Trek apart, that gives it significance beyond just being an entertaining action-adventure show, is its very intentional embrace of diversity. The cast didn't include a black woman and a man of Japanese descent by accident. It was by design. It was part of the point of the show. And that point was twofold. First, that there could be a bright, exciting future ahead for humanity if we ever get over our bigotry and prejudice and learn to view the variety present in our species in terms of race and ethnicity and culture and sex and gender as a strength rather than a weakness. And second, that we need to start getting over that bigotry and prejudice now. We sometimes get so wrapped up in the optimistic vision of the future bit that we forget what Star Trek is asking of us today in this moment. Yes, Lieutenant Uhura is a black woman who is a senior member of the crew of a starship exploring the galaxy in a future where humanity has evolved beyond the most fearful and ignorant aspects of its nature, but Nichelle Nichols was a black woman who was a member of the ensemble of a network TV series that came on the air in 1966, in the midst of a transformative and often violent struggle for the civil rights of black people. She wasn't just speaking to the future. She was speaking to her here and now. She epitomized the noblest principle of Star Trek, the motivating force behind the fiction depicted in the show and the production itself. 
The idea that things like pluralism and equality and cooperation are necessary and just and powerful. Powerful enough even to take us to the stars. Everything that makes Star Trek important embodied in one person. More than a character, more than an actor. An inspiration to an entire generation of people who then went on to inspire another generation. And so it goes. Nichelle Nichols is gone now, but the art she helped to create will endure, and the impact of her work and her life will be felt for as long as there are human beings alive to feel it. And that isn't fantasy. That's reality. 